Hey there, Nick. Stoked to be hanging out with you for a little bit again. But uh, look, man, I am stoked for Hacker Summer Camp. I don't know if you're going over to, what is it, B-Sides Las Vegas and then Black Hat and then the DEF CON conference. Ton of great events and like a family reunion for the security community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good seeing you again. And um, I'm actually not going on site this year. I was supposed to, but then life found a way. Uh, but one thing that we are doing and that PlexTrack is doing throughout the event um, is a Plex Hacks CTF. We've done it for a number of years and it's kind of fun. You know, they came to me and said, we want to do something engaging for the hacker community, for the InfoSec community. Um, and we'd like uh, some ideas. And I thought it would be neat if we could take some of the CTF concepts and doing challenges where you go and you hack a couple of fun things and then you get a flag for points. But rather than just straight up going into a scoreboard, it'd be neat if you got an opportunity to leverage both the hacking fun, and then you get an access to the PlexTrek platform. We have a customized instance that um, is designed for the CTF, wherein you have to, to get the points, you have to follow some of the instructions to take the flags from the CTF challenges, put them into the PlexTrek platform in certain fashions to then receive the points uh, for the CTF and um, try to make this event fun. You know, you don't need a PhD in cryptanalysis. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just uh, some fun different challenges. And so um yeah that's what we're looking at today now i gotta play hard to get because otherwise the youtube comments are gonna beat me up because i feel like i don't know there's a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction where we're thinking oh i don't know are we just trying to cram a product into a ctf uh but i, I don't know i'd love to get your take on that i know it's very easy to uh see well hey uh maybe we get to use it as a scoreboard but i'm curious i don't know uh you built this thing what say you <laughs> Yeah, you know, when we when we tried to build it out, the emphasis was really on making the challenges engaging, something that somebody may be able to do in a couple hours. We understand they got talks to go to, they have other CTFs to go to. This is something fun, wherein um, you don't really have to spend too much time in the PlexTrek platform, but I mean, it is a, a, a CTF put on uh, by PlexTrek. So getting folks to be able to see some of the workflows and be able to log in, it's, uh, you know, you could probably spend a few minutes in PlexTrek to get the points. Um, and uh, I think it's just it's more of a, a fun, light entry in. And really, when when they came to me and they said, we want to do some things, I was like, listen, hackers don't want to be sold to. They don't want to mess around in the product, but uh, tried to find a nice balance that said, you know, you can go and do some hacker fun, get to log into a Plex check. Maybe you've never logged in before. Get to click a couple buttons and then get your points. And thank you. I didn't mean to be putting you on the spot and grilling you there, but I, I, I always think, you know, what like Boss of the Sock or plenty of other sort of different capsule flag competitions are sort of in that same structure. Um, and there's nothing wrong with like, hey, you still get some great education that's free and like you can play it right now if you want. So, all right, I'm sorry, I'll let you take it away, my friend. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, the uh, though if you go to the Plex Track Twitter and it's on different pages. You'll see where to go. This is free. You don't have to be on site either. Uh, this is something that you can do remote. Uh, and so I'm going to share out my screen and we're going to go through one of the challenges um, that actually we did last year. You'll have access when you register. What will happen is you'll go to an instance of CTFD and that is going to be the scoreboard for the event. You'll self-register and then you'll get two emails. You'll get the registration email for CTFD for the CTF scoreboard. And then you'll also get access to a Plex track instance. It's going to automatically add you in and then you can log in. And so if we look at the challenges and for those who saw last year's CTF, you'll recognize some of these, you know, we had seven or eight challenges and these are some of the challenges from last year. You know, I don't want to give up the goat uh, or give up the ghost. However you say that saying. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of walk through this challenge, which is focused on, uh, you know, some API security concepts. So this is the flow that you would go through when you're when you're doing this year's challenges. You'd log in. It says use the flag recovered from this challenge as a report name in PlexTrack. OK, so we remember that and we see we're going to have to come over and go to the, this is the target that we want to go into, um, you know, this different port. And we also have a file here which we can download. So let's just first take a look. All right. So we see that there's an API and I'm going through burp. So we see that there's an API there. So we can do one of two things. In this instance, you can either download that open API file, but whenever you're doing API security, something to always check for is some of those swagger endpoints and some mm -hmm. of those different um, endpoints that can give you more information. Uh, because as you're assessing a, a target, the more information you gather, the better. And so here we see a bunch of the routes here uh, on the endpoint. And we see something very interesting here, PlexTrack CTF flag. So you know, the good hacker is going to be like, is it really that easy? Let's just like go to that endpoint and see what we can see. 
Uh, and so if we try and go to that endpoint, I got an extra slash, but it doesn't matter, invalid token. So that's telling me there's probably some authentication required. Let's take a look at some other endpoints in here. And so if we look, uh, this says it retrieves all users. That looks interesting. And so if we come here, we can list out all the users and we switch over to our burp view. We say we're intercepting the different requests because we're going to probably want to start manipulating these shortly. And so what we see here is when we hit this endpoint, um, we've got uh, the users listed out. So that's neat. We don't have their password. So we could do a bunch of things here, password brute forcing, et cetera. But if we go back into the endpoint, we see something, um, you know, typically you want to get credentials or get into the platform. And so we notice that there's a register endpoint here. We also see that it's a post. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy and I'm just going to browse to it um, just to get the request into Burp because I'm a lazy hacker. Now we're going to, we're going to get kind of a, it's looking, it's saying fail, but that's because we recognize that the method we want is a post method. So I'm looking here, I'm going to send this to repeater. I'm going to change the request method to a post and I'm just going to send data. Now, I also recognize there's some things we need to change here. So it's probably asking for us to provide values and we can actually see that in the Swagger endpoint. If we go and look, it's, accept, it's expecting for us to register. It needs a username, an email and a password. So I'm going to just copy this uh, JSON here and I'm just gonna put in, you know, I'll say Popo1, we'll leave it as password one, two, three and the username, we'll just put in some our Popo1. And so I'm gonna submit this and it's probably gonna error. And we notice, oh, it's expecting JSON data. So you always wanna make sure you're sending the right content type expected by the app. And so this should get us where we need to go, right? We're gonna come in. Now we've registered a user. Now we need to get an auth token. Uh, my expectation is as an authorized user, I should be able to grab the information. So if I come over here, there should be a login endpoint. And there you go. You could probably have even guessed that. Probably didn't even need to come back here and copy and paste this. If we come over here, um, if we look, it's a, a, also a post. So I'm just going to do my lazy hacker get. So trying to log in, um, I need to do the same thing before. I'm going to send this to repeater. I am going to now change this request method from a get request to a post. We've done that. And now we're going to just include the username and password. We actually just probably don't need the email in this request, but it's not going to hurt anything. Um, let's see what happens when we try and log into the app with the, with the user, user that we created. All right, sweet. Uh, wait, not sweet. Oh, forgot. We're sending JSON. Don't forget. Content type matters. All right, sweet. So we've got an auth token. So... Let's go back to that request where we uh, were trying to get the flag earlier. I'm gonna send that to repeater. And if I send it with nothing, it says invalid token. So let's use an authorization header, a common, you know, this looks like it's a bearer token. So we're gonna put in bearer, we'll paste the token and we should be good to go. But we have a problem. Only admins can see the flag. So I created a user, but it's not an admin what to do, what to do. So this is the crux of the flaw. This is a, called a mass assignment flaw. And if you Google it or you know look at the OWASP cheat sheet on mass assignment, basically when you have uh, parameters or fields or, or options that are bound to parameters that are kind of not really hidden or controlled, they're just obfuscated um, that folks can guess and assign the value to, That's a, they can do that activity and maybe garner unexpected results. So if we look back in our Swagger UI, we see something interesting. We see this debug. It says retrieve all details for a user. Now, if we visit this endpoint, what we'll end up seeing is we see the user and the password. Um, so, you know, it could, the, the, the CTF could be done at this point. You could literally just log in with one of these folks' passwords. Um, but in the real CTF, the pass isn't going to be displayed to that kind of activity. But what we also see is this admin parameter, and it's set to true or false. So when I'm creating a user, if we go and look, there is no admin parameter. However, it's just there. So to discover this in the wild, you could either brute force parameters. There are tools and plugins for that. You can just think like a developer and think, you know, is admin equal true? Admin equal true? Rights, privileges, etc. So let's real quick replay our um, replay our registration, and now we're going to add something. So I'm going to make, you know, uh, popo popo two, and we're going to add another. We're, we're going to add another parameter, and we're going to call it admin and we're going to make the the boolean value true so now if i register um it's done same message came back so now i should be able to log in and get a token 
for this user and we'll see if the results are different. So I've got a new token. I'm gonna to take this, I'm gonna add it to my authorization bearer uh, header here. And we got the flag. So nice. that, you know, it seems somewhat contrived, but I'll tell you having assessed a number, a no, I mean, how way too many APIs and web apps, the number of times where a developer has assumed uh, use the same route or workflow for a web application and just hidden the parameters or not displayed them in configurations, but you can guess them or at times you can brute force them. So now I'm going to take this flag and we're going to follow the instructions because if I log into CTFD, I kind of forget that there's a Plex track component of this and I try and submit this flag, it's not going to work. And you're going to get frustrated and be like, what the, what the? Well, remember, we need to use that flag as a name of a report. So you'd log into your Plex track instance. We have a custom built instance just for the CTF. You can go in and I'm just going to create a new client real quick. So I'll create a client, call it test. And then within that client, I'll create a report. And then as the instructions mentioned, I need to use the flag from that challenge as the report name. So one thing you'll notice, instead of a normal Plex track experience where you have the export to Word, export to CSV, all that stuff, you have a CTF button here. And so what will happen is you can check your flags and it'll say you have four more flags to find or however many are in the challenge. Um, and so that's cool. And then you can also then click this button to retrieve the flag. And so in this case, we kind of have some demo, demo, demo data here. We have flag five here for CTFD. So what you would do is take the value that's displayed from Plex track after you've followed the instructions, go back to the challenge, and you'll be able to then retrieve the points um, and continue to go. So as you go through the different challenges, it'll say things like, you know, you need to do this, you need to go into Plex track and do that. The idea is, Really, the, the emphasis is on some of the hacker fun and solving the challenges. And then sure. you really just take a name, do a, follow a couple instructions, and there you go. So, yeah, that's kind of a brief example of some of the indicative of some of the challenges that will be presented. You know, some of them are infrastructure. Some of them are web app and API. Um, if the stars align, you may have some Azure AD fun, Ooh. some traditional Active Directory fun. Um, we're going to try and pull out some of the stops to have a, lot, a wide swath. Uh, which is tough for remote CTF yeah. to get Active Directory stuff uh, going. But um, yeah, that's what we got going on. Hey, that is awesome. I, so for one thing, I love that it, a cutesy little challenge. Like I realized, hey, poking around in Burp Suite and you have a creator's bias having built the thing yourself. Like I know you get like desensitized because like, oh, I, I, I made the challenge. Uh, but I don't know. I, I always you know, stumble within Burp Suite. And I'll just like, oh, let me do this in Python or click around. But between the Swagger API, uh, I figured that's pretty handy. To just keep throwing stuff in repeater. And I like that you just send it as a get request first. I know you keep <laughs> saying you're lazy, but it's like, well, what if it gives you a random them error or you start to see the different right. object types like you can get some funny odd behavior there that it's might true. help clue you in um but sweet hey man I, I love that you can sprinkle in a little bit of plex track i'm hopeful we can get some azure ad in there that would be wild um but how can folks go play how can folks sign up and register you said on, on twitter is that right yeah the url for the uh, event will be released right now there's kind of a drip campaign going with random encoded values and, I saw uh, one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. I, I I did a bunch of different kind of teasers. And then finally, I believe on um, a certain day, there's mm. going to be one that will, uh, when you decode it, it will give you access to the CTF. And we that decoded URL will give you a little bit of a leg up because then we'll announce officially the URL. But folks who decoded it with whatever they did will get a little early access into the endpoint um, to be able to at least register first and start actually playing a little bit early. Um, so pay attention to the Plex Track Twitter for the early access URL. And then uh, the, the straight up URL is going to be just released from the Plex Track Twitter and it'll be on web pages and stuff like that um, for where you to go register and, and play. And I'll be online um, managing it remotely. Um, and so, yeah, I hope folks have fun and, and, and have a good time. Well, hey, this is awesome, Nick. And hey, thank you so much. All the great stuff that you do. I'm always super happy, super happy and glad to see you kicking it at Plex Track and you're doing great stuff, all you. So thanks again. We'll see you at Hacker Summer Camp. <laughs> Cheers. Later.